Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we're looking at the archaeological evidence of Pompeii and Herculaneum, and we'll be looking at the cities themselves. We have a wide variety of sources for studying Pompeii and Herculaneum. We have archaeological evidence and written evidence about these cities. The archaeological evidence is the two cities themselves. We have a large amount of archaeological evidence. No other archaeological site in Italy reveals so much about life in Roman times. Because what you have is two cities that were destroyed in a volcanic eruption. And nobody knew about them for 1500 years. Over 1500 years, they were just covered and lost to the world. So this is very well preserved, these two cities, and it gives us a great glimpse of life in the ancient world. In Pompeii, the city was hit with many pumice stones over a period of 18 hours. And after this, it was a pyroclastic surge. This pyroclastic surge covered the city in about four to six metres of volcanic ash and debris. And Herculaneum was actually covered in about 20 metres worth of debris. In this picture, we can see what it might have been like at the time of the eruption. You have Mount Vesuvius spewing out all of this material. And this would have been going on for 18 hours. Massive amounts of material would have been coming out of the volcano. And down here, you have the city, all the innocent people, they're not even sure what's going on. The word volcano didn't even exist in ancient Rome. So they wouldn't have even fully known what was going on. The pyroclastic surge that hit Pompeii caused fires which burned things such as timber. In Herculaneum, it was different. There, there was no pyroclastic surge, so more things such as timber and skeletons have survived. They didn't have the fires going through the city like they did uh, in Pompeii. In Pompeii and Herculaneum, there is evidence such as large public buildings made from stone, bricks and tile, remains of unborn babies, the remains of aqueducts which were used to bring water into the city, evidence of furniture, paintings on the walls, mosaics. A mosaic is like a painting. It's a picture on the wall or on the ground, but it's not a picture which has been painted with a brush. A mosaic is a picture where they have coloured stones and they put the little coloured stones in the wall or on the floor. So it creates an image, it creates a picture, but it's not like a painting with brushes. But they had mosaics in Pompeii. And there's also evidence of food bars and taverns. They had uh, bakeries and all those types of things that you might find in a, in a modern city. Here is a beautiful picture of Pompeii. You can see the stone, the stones on the ground and the raised footpaths and the ruins of the buildings on each side. And you can see how narrow the streets are, but it's quite a good, well-made street. There is evidence of luxury houses. There is an amphitheatre and other public buildings, such as temples. There are also other things, such as jewellery and pottery. So there's all different types of archaeological evidence in Pompeii and Herculaneum. The cities, the streets, the buildings, the houses, even the little things like the jewellery and pottery and so on. Pompeii also has the plaster casts, which have become so famous. And these, of course, were made by Giuseppe Fiorelli, and they show what the humans would have looked like when they, when they were killed in the volcanic eruption. In Herculaneum, they had the skeletal remains of some people, but not so many plaster casts. So there is a difference in the human remains between Pompeii and Herculaneum. Pompeii tends to have the plaster casts, and Herculaneum has more skeletons. But even in some of the plaster casts, there is some skeletal remains. In Herculaneum, some of the following things have been discovered. Private houses, scrolls of papyri. Papyri was used for writing. People would write on papyrus, and they would write books and so on, all on papyrus, and that's the way they wrote back in those days. There's also evidence of graffiti, and it's a little bit funny because a lot of people today in modern times complain about graffiti. 
and you hear people on the radio or on TV complaining about graffiti and young people doing graffiti. Well, guess what? This is an old problem. 2,000 years ago in Pompeii, you had graffiti. And it's amazing to read some of the graffiti and uh, learn about the people of Pompeii from their graffiti. There's also skeletal, skeletal remains of humans and animals. There's tools and work equipment and shops and workshops. Other things such as those listed below have also been found in Herculaneum. Jewelry and glassware, fishing nets, organic material including food. It's quite extraordinary we even have organic material that has been preserved for all these years. So we can see the types of food they were eating. And they have mosaics and frescoes and also cooking equipment. In this picture we can see Herculaneum. So there's the city itself, some of the remains of the city, and then you have these modern buildings in the, ba in the background. But because these cities were buried for over 1500 years, the cities themselves, their buildings, uh, the, the furniture, the jewellery, all these things have been so wonderfully preserved. And it's through all, these, all this that we can learn so much about the people who lived in those times. It's this archaeological evidence that has been able to teach us so much about these people.